All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Here in the recent past, I had a viewer who left a comment on one of my videos, and he didn't give me much detail, but he certainly wanted a response. And because I didn't have much to work with, I had to really think about it. Here's what he said, basically. What do you say to people like me who feel like they have no hope and there's no end in sight? Hmm. Well, I had to think about that for a while. I gave my response last night, and and I want to I wanna talk about this because while some people have such personal details that they don't want to share them, we can, most of us, uh, certainly understand the feeling, right? You felt that way at times. You might be going through it right now. In my teen years, I had a very, very, very difficult time, very dark times. It wasn't just a moment, it was a valley, okay? And hardly anything has eclipsed that experience in my life since then. Almost, 10 years ago, almost something did. But it certainly prepared me for future tribulations. There was a time when my younger brother and sister and I were all sent to go live with my uh, aunt and uncle for uh, just a little while until some things could get worked out. And uh, I contemplated the worst. Not only did I think about ending things, but I thought about <laughs> doing that in ways that I can't even begin to utter on here. I wanted revenge. I wanted justice. I wanted recompense for the evils that had taken place in, in a lot of different areas. And I was willing to do things that I, I look back now and I think it's just unimaginable. It's amazing to me that I didn't end up dead for one reason or another or in jail. And so while I'm not even going to, while I'm not here to discuss all of that, I, what I can say is I can relate to what you're going through, what you have been through. And I want to talk about maybe how to deal with this or how to think about it in a way that will maybe give you some hope and help you to think constructively. I was watching my my daughter's dog. Uh, well, we're, we're kind of like dog sitting for my daughter. And it's a, it's a pit bull. Still what I would consider somewhat of a puppy, but very strong, very active. And, uh, and so we have a dog likewise that's 12 years old. So there's quite a bit of a difference. And he's, he's, he's not temperamentally anything like her dog. And so he has this uh, toy, or she, her dog, my daughter's dog, she has this toy that, uh, that is meant to be pulled on, right? That's what you do with dogs in general, at least it seems like, you know, and uh, especially the pit bulls. And so uh, this dog provokes my dog to play with her. And they both pull at the same time. And my dog's growling and growling and growling and like pulling and pulling and pulling and it's trying to put on this facade of being all tough and mean and everything. Or at least it seems like it from my end, you know, it's kind of silly. And her dog, this pit bull, is just standing in one spot. It's a lot stronger, you know. It's got youth on its side and it's got genetics also. But he's, she's just holding the rope in her mouth and resisting but not responding emotionally to it and just staring at my dog in the eyes and just waiting patiently for my dog to wear herself out. And it's funny, because it worked. It worked. And oftentimes what we have to do is realize that whatever is pulling against us that presents itself as an adversary in our life, one of the things that we can do is we don't have to com well, we don't have to comply. We can resist, but we can resist patiently. Because one of the things that you can guarantee in life is, is, that, is that things will always change. I know you may think that there's no end in sight, and you may feel like the days are always going to be dark, but it's a guarantee that in life things will change. They must. Whatever you're experiencing, whether good or bad, will pass. 
Understand that. Whether good or bad, it will pass. And you will the, the outlook will change, the scenery, the backdrop, it will it will all change. And that in and of itself should offer you some hope. I know it just seems like like things are never going to, but they do. They do. And eventually everything will just be a faded memory. The good ones you want to clutch on to, the horrible ones you want to catalog. You want to learn from them. My son, my oldest son, has been uh, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for 12 years. And it's something that I have never done. I've done a little bit of it, but just not, not like that, you know. And one of the observations you make, uh, whether you're watching a jiu-jitsu class or watching the UFC, is when, well, in the ground game, there's a lot of patient waiting if the person knows what they're doing. When I was a kid and we'd get into fights with boys much bigger and older than me, might have been my brothers, but regardless of whether it was school or at home, uh, they would get on top of you, they would pin you down, and they'd pin your arms down while they're sitting on top of you and do whatever else they're gonna do, punch you, slap you, and you would panic because you didn't know what to do. In jiu-jitsu, they teach patient resistance. And this is one thing, uh, one of the things I've observed about them is that it's all about the struggle. They enjoy what they do, but it's all about struggle. And a lot of it is patient resistance. And, and simply waiting for things to play themselves out and waiting for the adversary to wither away in energy. And I've seen this time and time again. Oftentimes, the person who holds out, the person who waits patiently, and does not respond emotionally aggressive, will be the victor. And, and the whole idea is to put yourself and to put others in compromising positions and make them think their way out. That's something I really respect. I think there's valuable life lessons within jujitsu itself. And I think that's what you have to do. You have to be willing to allow yourself to go through the struggle and allow yourself to be in situations that you feel like you can't get out of. Wait patiently and resist, but don't overreact. Don't overact. And allow yourself room to think about how you're going to manipulate things that'll work for you to find yourself a way out of the situation and allow your adversary's energy to wither away, however that may come across. Some years ago, I read a book called Stanley, and I'm rereading it. I'm almost done rereading it. It's about Dr. Henry Morton Stanley, an, uh, an explorer to the African continent back in the 1800s. He did things that nobody else has done and uh, his life is remarkable. When you read about him, you're going to feel all sorts of different ways. Now, this book is not a solution to the problem, but I'll tell you a couple things that makes me think about how this applies to what we're talking about. See, Henry Stanley, when he was a young boy, had a very, very troubled childhood, and he wanted out. He wanted to put his past behind him. He wanted to become a different person. He didn't want, he, he didn't want people to even know where he came from. He wanted to be famous. He wanted to be uh, a celebrity of some kind. Back then, it was much different than it is now. They didn't have social media. They went out and did big things. They invented things. They explored. Um, they built things. Uh, so, you know, it, it, was, it looked a lot different. So he decided he was, he was going to become a journalist. He became a journalist and found out that um, Dr. Livingston was presumed to be missing in Africa. He wasn't really, but people thought he was. So he said, I'm going to go find him. He kind of became an explorer by accident. Stanley did. So he went looking for Livingston, thinking that this is going to make me very famous. And it did. It did. But it came at a cost. 
He was backstabbed. He was maligned. He was discredited. His love interests uh, were thwarted. He felt despondent. He felt, felt in despair. Everything was dark. And it was just very, he, had, he lived a very troubled life, but not one without purpose. Here's a couple things he said that I, I hope will mean something to you. He one time said, I was not sent into the world to be happy. I was sent for a special purpose. I was sent for a special purpose. So many of us believe that the whole meaning of life is to pursue happiness and comfort, right? And if we don't have happiness and comfort, well, then we don't have any joy. I want to, I want to suggest that you lose happiness by pursuing it. You really do. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that the way to be happy is to find it by accident. Well, I say by accident. I mean, you can deliberately find it, but you have to circumvent things. You, what you have to do is you have to focus on your purpose. You might, you might say, well, I don't even know what my purpose is. Well, it's whatever you're doing now. It's wherever you're at doing whatever you're doing. See, the Japanese have this philosophy called Ikigai. It's about the purpose for which you rise up in the morning and do what you do. And you do it with meaning. You do it to the best of your ability, whatever it is. The Bible has a verse similar to that, uh, this way of thinking. It says, whatever you do, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. Therefore, you know, whatever you do is your purpose. And your purpose may change from time to time. But the whole, the whole philosophy behind Ikigai is to, to know what it is that you get up for every morning. And do it to the best of your ability. And therefore, you find purpose. And when you find purpose in what you're doing, you find joy. And joy sustains longer than happiness. Happiness is momentary. Joy can be everlasting. Because it's, it's seated in meaning. So think about what Stanley said. He goes, I was not sent into the world to be happy. I was sent for a special purpose. He knew that regardless of how things uh, were perceived by him, that everything had some kind of meaning. Another thing Dr. Stanley said, he said, I am a man of action who must struggle forward to do and to be. My happiness lies in contending against difficulties. He understood that there was a struggle, just as like I was, I was talking about jujitsu. You will not have happiness. In fact, you will not have joy or comfort without a struggle. You must experience the struggle. And it's the very thing that you're going through right now that has you questioning your ability to make it. It will be the very thing that brings you purpose, joy, happiness. When he said, my happiness lies in contending against difficulties, uh, he really glommed onto something that I'm glad he did because there are so many people in this world. You, 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 hear, about, you hear about celebrities, people with high status, people with lots of money, billionaires, uh, you know, uh, CEOs of corporations that throw themselves off of buildings or drink themselves to death. Uh, Stanley didn't do that. As hard as it was, he understood that the struggle had a purpose and the struggle actually gave him what he wanted eventually. So resist, but patiently resist. Understand that what you're going through has a purpose and that by it, you will find meaning. And therefore you will encounter joy and I'm telling you right now, I want, I want to reiterate this. Uh, I, I understand that you feel like that might not be a, a really good answer, but I know from personal experience that whatever you're going through will be just a memory eventually. It will. It will pass. 
I hope that's uh, meant something to you. I hope it's encouraged your heart. Leave a comment down below and consider donating to this channel if you want to show a tangible way of showing thanks. But you don't have to. It doesn't make any difference either way to me. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I just, I'm just glad that you tuned in. If you want to know what I have in my beer today, I am wearing Artius Man's Spiced Latte Beard Oil and their Spiced Latte Beard Balm. Great stuff, especially for this time of year. If you want to know how to get it, I'll leave a link down below. I'll also give you a code to save you 20%. And uh, I highly, highly recommend it, even as a gift. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and uh, please subscribe and watch for more. I'll catch you in the next one. In the meantime, be wise.